Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will talk about how to calculate uh, the band structure of silicon crystal. And um, in the last video, I have shown you how to calculate the tensile state of uh, silicon. But that is uh, much simpler than, than the calculation of the band, band structure, because the tensile state is just a one-dimensional function. So x-axis is the energy and y-axis is the tensile state. And um, and the information of the of the reciprocal lattice has been integrated out, but here, in uh, in reality, for for every point in the reciprocal space, you get a, a discrete array of um, of energies. For example, at uh, at this L point here, you can see from the band structure here at L point, you have an array of discrete energy levels. And that uh, array is basically the energy of different bands. And if you change your, uh, if you move your k points in the in the uh, in the k space, those array of uh, ar those array of energy will also change with respect to uh, the position in the k space. So basically, now the uh, the problem is not a, a one dimensional function, but it is a uh, three-dimensional function and, and several three-dimensional uh, function. So in this case, it is uh, it is not possible to represent all of the information uh, on, on, on paper. So, uh, so you need to uh, come up with a smarter idea how to represent your calculation. So the common way to do it is to uh, is to find out the high symmetry points in the um, in the brilliant zone. And what I show here is the um, is the uh, first brilliant zone for F FCC lattice. And you know that silicon crystal is two FCC lattice uh, shifted by one fourth of the uh, crystal of the, of the unit cell. So uh, so here um, the the high symmetry points are labeled here with different names. For example, the L point is the uh, center of the hexagon here. And the gamma point is the like center of the brilliant zone, and uh, this x point is the center of the square here, and u point is the uh, is the center for this edge here. So uh, so on the right hand side, this is the uh, this is one reference of the band structure for silicon, and um, it it ac actually goes from l to gamma to x to u to gamma. So it goes. Uh, so it chooses a path from L to gamma, and from gamma to x. That is the center of the square, and then from x to u. That is the center of this edge, and then from u directly to gamma straightly. Okay. So um, if you search search the literature, you can find different ways to define the the k path, um, and it's totally fine that you uh, that if you um, include this k point here, or in, you include a w point here. Um, indeed, you can find some literature about uh, also using other other uh, k path. So, uh, b but in today's uh, video, I will I will follow the same k path as the reference here. Uh, from L to gamma, gamma to x, x to u, and u to gamma. And and what you notice here is that the uh, size, the length of the segments of the uh, of this plot is different. So so I I will also try to reproduce that by setting the uh, number of points to be different. So you see that uh, in x, uh, from x to u, that is this uh, this segment, we set uh, the points to be uh, smaller so that um, in the output it is also uh, proportional to what we uh, see in the reference. So the basic steps are the same. You first need to do the self-consistency calculation, and then you do the bands calculation, and you do some post-processing, and then to plot the band. However, uh, since you uh, since when you want to put, um, plot the band, you need to uh, specify the Fermi energy. And, um, and in, the, in the steps that I said before, um, it is not uh, like the Fermi energy is not automatically obtained. So there are two ways to uh, obtain the Fermi energy. Either you add a smearing term in the self-consistency calculation part, or 
you you keep um, you keep the self consistency uh, part the same, but you add another non self consistency calculation with a denser k k points as we did last time for the tensor state. So if you follow the second uh, possibility, it is um, um, it is usually more accurate, like the Fermi energy, and also the non self consistency calculation would help a little bit uh, on the on the bands calculation because uh, the, you you already uh, refined the calculation on a denser k k point grid. However, the left possibility um, with the smearing uh, has has uh, has one st step less. So that you don't have to calculate the uh, dense k points, so this will be faster. So in this uh, video, I will show show you uh, so what does it mean by adding smearing or not. But then we will uh, follow the uh, second possibility to, cal to calculate the uh, energy band. Okay. So uh, as usual, I have already uh, written down the uh, the input files and. Uh, yeah, and then we need to first source the Perl Studio, and we first check the uh, the self consistency input file, and uh, everything is is more or less the same. It's just that I add another kind of uh, kinet uh, kinetic energy for the charge to be eight times the E cut WFC here, so to be more accurate. Um, and then, and then uh, I specify the number of bands calculated here. So um, if you don't specify this line, it will it will be half of the electrons in half of the total electrons in the system, and the, and the total electrons calculated are specified by uh, by this pseudo potential file. How do you find out there are how, how many electrons are there? You can comment out. You can uh, so if you don't know, you can comment out one line in in the input file by this exclamation mark. Yeah. So so basically, th this line and this line are uh, are commented out. So they will not be uh, they will not be run. Okay. So so we first see if we do it uh, without. Without the specification for the uh, number of bands, and then we take a look in the output file, and in the header of the output file, you can find the number of uh, number of electrons here. So there are eight electrons in the in the system, and uh, the band, and it only uses half of the uh, electrons. Um, as uh, as the number of bands, so four. So uh, in the case of insulator of semiconductor, it will be uh, exactly half of the uh, half of the number of electrons. But uh, in the case of um, of metal, or you add as uh, add a smearing term, it could be a little bit more than half. But here we want to calculate eight. The reason is that if you just calculate four, it is um, all of them are the valence band. And there is no conduction span. If you if you see from the output file, still, you can find out that uh, in the end it only specifies the highest occupied level because there is no information about the conduction band. So it doesn't doesn't know what is the uh, what is the lowest unoccupied level. So we can add this, uh, like we can un uncomment this and set the bands to be eight, and then we set uh, we run again. And see in output file. Here we first go go into the heater to uh, to see that the number number of electrons are still eight, but the band is uh, successfully increased to eight bands. Okay, and uh, if we scroll down, there there is more information here because now we include the conduction bands, so it knows what is the highest occupied level, what is the, also what is the lowest unoccupied level, and um, the uh, the difference between those two numbers is more or less the the band gap. 
The reason why I say more or less is that the K point grid is still not very dense here, so the estimation could be a little bit off, but um, but I guess this this is more more or less there. Okay, but still you see, uh, no uh, no matter whether you uh, you add uh, add a specification for the band number, you don't get a Fermi energy inside this file. To get the Fermi energy inside this file, you need a smearing term here. The reason is that uh, if you don't have a smearing term, you are basically calculate at, at at zero temperature. At zero temperature, you uh, you know that there's a there's a band gap. Uh, the Fermi energy could be anything inside a band gap. So to solve that, you need uh, uh, you need some smearing on the Fermi uh, on the Fermi uh, level, and uh, and then, if you do the calculation again, and you open the output file, and you see that uh, it outputs the Fermi energy. However, here uh, you see that it doesn't output the highest occupied level or lowest unoccupied level. The reason is that you add a smearing, so so not everything below the Fermi energy is occupied. Or everything under, uh, like above the Fermi energy, is unoccupied. So this is no longer true be because of the smearing. Okay, so this is one way that you can get uh, the Fermi energy. But uh, but in uh, in this video, I will I will just uh, not use that. If you if you if you do it like that, you can skip the the NSCF uh, calculation. And, and then directly go to the bands and bands pp and plot band calculation yeah so we comment that out and uh, do the calculation do the self consistency calculation again so it's finished we check again yeah so now it is back the highest occupied and lowest un unoccupied level and then we want to do a non-self-consistency -consist calculation to, to calculate the Fermi level. And uh, yeah, so this is quite familiar to you. And uh, we just do this NSCF1, NSCF1. So do this calculation. And then in the output file, you can always find the Fermi energy. So yeah. So the third step is to run the bands calculation. So still the uh, the pw.x program. Um, and the only difference is that you change the calculation type to be bands, and everything else you keep the same except that you change the k points to the to the capers points that you manually uh, that you manually define and this is the k points the k path that you want want to define here okay i need to make this smaller okay yeah so so basically it is uh, the first k point is l and uh, second is gamma and x u gamma and then it specified the path from L to gamma, gamma to X, X to U, U to gamma, and uh, and uh, this number is is the total number of K points, which is just the number of lines here. And then for each line, the first three numbers are the K X, K Y, and K Z, and the fourth line, uh, uh, like the fourth number, is the weight. And the weight here means that uh, means the number of points starting from that uh, starting from that path. So basically, it, it means that from L to gamma there are twenty points, from gamma to X there are thirty points, from X to U there are ten points, from U to gamma there are thirty points. And this twenty has no meaning here. You can set it to whatever you like. Okay. And then the question is, uh, how do you, like, like now you know that you want to specify a path from L to gamma to from gamma to X, from X to U, from U to gamma. But now the question is that how do you uh, get these numbers? Yeah. 
So one very useful software is xkristen. And you can open the input file or output file, whatever you want. For example, the output file for the SCF calculation here, for example. And it's just a single point calculation just to get the structure of, um, of silicon crystal. And then you choose in the tools, there's a K-path selection. Yeah, and then you see the first brilliant zone. So, uh, so maybe I need to move it a little bit so that I can see, uh, I can show you both at the same time. Okay. So we first, so we rotate it to the to to the same way as as this one, and then we want to get from. Uh, from L to gamma, and L is the center of this hexagon, so this one, and then to gamma, gamma is the ce uh, center of the brilliant zone, and from gamma to to X, from gamma to X, X is the center of the square, from X to U, U is the center of this edge, from U to gamma again. Yeah, and then you get the reciprocal coordinates here, and uh, and in principle you could just copy all of the coordinates from from here to here, and um, of course you see that it's 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 different. The reason is that there there is a very high symmetry of the first brilliant zone. So even if you get different numbers as here, but uh, but they are more or less symmetric. So you will get the same band structure out, yeah. Okay. So I will just uh, close this one. And and this is the k path that we want to specify. And uh, let's just do the calculation. So to do the calculation, you Also have to also use the pw.x three. Oh no, sorry, this is not three but two. Now it's finished, and um, yeah, and now the bands are calculated, but uh, they are not in a way that is readable. So you need to post-process the, the the result, and then you need to use another uh, another subprogram which is called band.x to uh, to post-process the result, um, and this is the input file for band.x. And uh, you need to specify the name of the of the output data. So so this output file will contain the data of the bands. And afterwards, you can you can use GNU plot or you can use uh, Python. You can or you can use, as I will show later, the plot band do, uh, band dot x uh, in in Quantum Espresso to plot the uh, the band. Okay, and then we just run. The band.x. Remember that you need to change it to band.x. Uh, dot three. Out. Okay, I made a mistake. It is not called band.x, but bands.x. Okay, so now it's finished, and uh, you see this is the file that contains the data of the bands. Yeah. 
and it is structured but uh, still we cannot directly put uh, plot it what I what I want to use is the uh, not this one is the p is the plot band dot, uh, dot x so for the plot band dot x you can do it interact interactively you can just uh, type in plot band dot x and then uh, it will prompt you for different inputs um, what I do here is that I constructed an input file for the plot band dot x and um, and for the input file the first line is the uh, is the file that contains the data of the bands uh, which is the output of the of the last step and then the second line specifies the uh, the window of energy so this is the minimum energy this is the maximum energy plotted so how, how do you get these numbers you can go to uh, whatever output file for example the output file for the scf or the output file of the nscf or even the bands i will just show you the output file of the bands and then scroll down and take a look at the at the energy of different k points so basically this means there are one two three there are eight energy bands at um, at this k, uh, k point and the energy is from minus four electron volt to 13 electron volt and you may scroll down a little bit and you, you will see that okay it's more or less from minus six to to 15 electron volt so here we say minus 7 to 16 electron volt to um, to take into account of everything and this is the name of the output file and this is also the name of the output file uh, for this one you need a, spe a special software to to open in Ubuntu and this one you can directly open in Ubuntu and uh, so, so basically those are the, the plots of the bands and this is the Fermi energy you have to specify and uh, in our case, we can just copy it from, from here. From the output, you can either copy it from the output of the NSCF, or if you use smearing in the SCF, you can also copy it from there. Okay, so this is, and this one is the, um, is the, spacing of the y labels yeah you know, of the of the labels on the energy axis and uh, and this number here we usually set it to be the fermi energy this is the energy that you you will shift it to be to be zero energy so basically this defines the fermi energy as as zero, as zero energy in the plot so then we can do the plot and uh, Usually I don't use MPR run here. Quantum is press three plot band dot x and the name is circuit four. Okay. should use this one yeah in this case you shouldn't use a minus IMP because it doesn't accept that you need to use this uh, this lesser sign okay and then this is the output this uh, si dot bands dot ps open this ps file maybe you want to rotate it and this is actually the energy band so so this one means the spacing um, of, of the energy axis so this is a nine eight seven if you if you change it to two for example uh, maybe we should close this one first we've changed it to two you will see that the spacing changes to two and zero is the Fermi energy. Okay. Uh, so, so if you see from from here to here, we successfully reproduces the uh, 
the band structure calculation in the reference. And you see this is a this is the Fermi energy, and there is a band gap here, and um, and the first line is uh, is what we specified L gamma x u and gamma, and the shape and everything is the same as um, as the reference. Okay, so in today's video, I have shown you how to do band structure calculation of uh, of silicon crystal. And um, and I have shown you how to obtain the Fermi energy in in two different ways, and how to uh, how to obtain k path. If you know that we want to plot from uh, L to gamma to x to u to gamma, how to convert the the name here to the actual uh, coordinates by x crystal. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.